So how do we get back on track to what we want to talk about? Long range planning. We need to Yes, we have to come we need back to reestablish. Okay. Rachel, are you ready, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Now we're ready, David. I have a to circle back to communication. Okay. The city manager reports. What about making them public? Yeah. You've already done the report. Turn it into a newsletter or something that gets posted online. Uh, Bob had sent sent me his reports. Uh, can't ask for any more about how to report on what's going on in the city. So. Uh, we just automatically make them public. What what's right. relevant for the public? Sure. Yeah, you could cut and paste, and and I do have to say, and I, I sent you this in an email, but I truly, truly appreciate your weekly reports. I, was getting ready to I just, Bob, here the way you're communicating with us, and the the simple little, and then you end it with "Have a great weekend." Back at you, Does I Perkins, do. I appreciate it. Does Perkins have a newspaper? We do, and he's. You know what they are? They're starved for something to put in it. Would they publish your report? They do. And he's used, he's typically got a report every two weeks. He's they uh, call him and ask him or he calls them. So our commission meeting is in there. But yeah, I could type my like my weekly email, send to them or Yeah. I thought about doing that because it's all public record. I'm just yeah. vomiting information basically. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. So if they're asked, they have an idea of what. But I like what Tammy said as well, as far as, you know, maybe not all of it, but the important things to help communicate with people. <coughs> yes. What is the worst problem in Perkins that the board has never dealt with? As far as the city, something within the city's control that needs to be changed or fixed that you haven't gotten around to. Is there anything that stands out? Justin, anything just comes to mind, or are the right projects being worked on? Um, the right projects are being worked on, then. Okay. Go ahead. I think he's correct. It just feels like everything takes a long time. Oh, it will. There's a but, reason. It's somebody but, else's money. But it's like uh, Mr. Tackett was saying a while ago, he's like, you're, you're a coach and you want things to happen. but. It's, it's all a process, and I get that, but... We sometimes don't recognize cities are amongst the most regulated businesses in the world. Correct. You report to DEQ, you report... To, everything we do is regulated. And Rachel doesn't let him spend a dime hardly yeah. at all. I'm sorry. I mean, we are heavily we regulated. That. Yes, we do. We love her for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have that question come up a lot. A business person gets elected to council and says, I don't like this because... I, in the business world, if I wanted something done, I would go do it and get it done. And my answer is usually, but it's not your money. You can do that if it's your own personal money, but this is someone else's. I think so, that was my biggest takeaway when I got on the board was that the this process. really takes a long time. And our administration does a great job to keep us financially stable. So not to say that you wouldn't want to... Um, hinder progress but you really don't want to rock the boat when you're talking about somebody else's money yeah it's, it's the process is built that way for a reason so sarah what is the worst uh, worst problem of the city that has not been dealt with or that you think needs to or is there one there may not be one but um perkins is an older community so i think that there's infrastructure projects that need to be gotten to but again i wouldn't say that that's the worst or that it's being ignored or that it's not getting gotten to. Like Justin said, I think that we've done a good job and we're continuing to learn how to make decisions and how to move forward and how to delegate those projects to who it needs to be delegated to to get it done. The needs uh, exceed the resources if it's like oh, every other city. I, mm, that's my biggest takeaway since yeah. April. Is there any project that just stands out Boy, I wish we had fixed this. I, I know it's in the works. It's it, it's like both of them said, it's in the works. But, you know, I think sometimes the sewer system comes up a lot with people, literally. <laughs> I would like for you to fix that one first, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, 
three right. things that cost money are the three P's. Mm -hmm. Personnel, police, and I think, you know, I, I so appreciate Bob <laughs> taking me on a ride around around town. And I learned so much that day. And, you know, the poo and everything that goes into that is really educational. And, and I, I'm, a, I'm an educator, so I love learning. And this is great for me because I feel rejuvenated a little bit uh, diving into things and learning new things. Um, of course, going into the big water tower, I acted like a kid. I echoed it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to go. In the water tower. Well, ask for the water tower; it'll take you. <laughs> Autumn, is there any project within the city's control? That Before we go on, I want to say something about personnel. Okay. I, I'm so excited about our new park and rec director. I got to meet him today. I'm so excited, <laughs> Gene, to be here and and have two new employees that. I, Rachel just needs, not because she's not adequate at all, but because she is totally overworked. We all, we all, I mean, it's not me. And I'm, everybody. I, I am very happy that Bob has found, found the money and had the savings to be able to help our city. It doesn't just help racial as an individual or Bob, but it helps our whole entire city when we can have, yeah, that's the word. Thank you, dear. Efficient. So I'm sorry for interjecting. Go ahead. Autumn, anything that stands out? Yeah. Okay. There's some background to it though. Okay. That's fine. Um, well, because I have lived here for a long time, infrastructure is very important and I agree 100% with that. Um, but long before I became a commissioner, I have been a f in the 50C3 for the library of the Friends of the Library, and I've also, I'm also on the library trust for the city. Um, finishing or restoring or finishing the building that we currently own for the new location for our library, um, something that's very important to me. And I think anybody that's sitting up here that had a conversation with me before they either ran or thought about doing it, I have always tried to be very upfront about this is something I'm going to advocate for. Like, yeah. Good. I don't, I mean, it's not a secret. I don't try to hide it from people. Like, is it funded? It is not. And we, we have, ex we have exhausted, staff has exhausted our grant scribe program trying to find grants, but, and there is a long convoluted background to how it was supposed to be funded and you know, I'm a big believer in the past is the past, but the building is still sitting there empty. Do so, you have any outstanding general obligation bonds that the voters have approved that go on property tax? And two, do you have any capacity to do more? Possibly. I don't know that. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess the voters would have to approve it, but uh, have you looked at what? Some capacity. I don't know how much. Because sometimes those projects are the find out. Yeah, maybe that's find out what the capacity is, and, and that would be a policy decision. Policy decisions to whether you do it. The only thing that comes up quite a bit along these lines is parks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a, you know, you throw a million dollars into a park pretty quick. Oh yeah. And then you got people like him that wants me to throw a million dollars into sewer lines. <laughs> Some of those projects, though, general obligation so bonds have right? to be approved by the voters but they are extra money to do those projects that we think the voters will approve. And whether it's a library, a park, those are a whole lot easier. They're not going to approve them for sure, but those are a whole lot easier to take to the public and see if they support it. Would they support it with the library? At the current state, I'm not sure. Yeah. It was, it's it been was brought 10 plus into, years. It was brought into now. a negative. That's not, I'm just saying it it's been that long. a negative connotation public opinion, um, in, in my opinion, has swayed over a library um, because of frustrations and her feelings, and, it, yeah. and that's how all of that goes. But um, That usually dooms a project. It does. Um, 
I just can't, and that's why I say I've always tried to be upfront about it because I was that long before I was here. Right. I, I'm a teacher. I'm going to advocate for literacy. Like, that's my job. <laughs> well, maybe a good solution is for Bob to see what capacity is available. Maybe in the next 30 days or so, try to have some answer as to how much capacity you have. And then uh, once you know what that capacity is to see what projects you could do or, or whether you think they're feasible to do projects with that capacity. And then I can assure you, general rule with general obligation bonds is if you're not 100% in favor of it, if it's a 3-2 vote to go do something, it's going to have a hard time selling. It should be projects that all of you can support and say, this is a great project for Perkins. Let's convince the voters to vote for it. And it is work to get those passed. It takes communicating well and getting information out well. Uh, but it's interesting. Those are doable these days. Lots of cities are doing general obligation bond projects and getting them approved. Okay. Whether that should be the first one leads to a good discussion of whether it should be that or parks or something else. Maybe it's other city facilities. You probably have a long list of needs that exceed what's available. And I would want, I would want a staff idea of what do you rank as the worst facility? That's the way we approach it in Sand Springs. What's our worst facility that we have employees working in? And they just had a GO bond for animal animal control facility because it is a horrible working condition for the employees. So the voters approved a new animal control facility, but that becomes the argument. We're working on the worst facility that we have employees working in day to day. I, do I get to answer the sure. question? Sure. I think the. 23,000 feet of sewer line and 15,000 feet of water line that needs to be replaced now. Yeah. Now. Um, and we're not, and you put a million dollars or so, you get about 9,000 feet. Yeah. And that's, our employees are working in that. Yeah. I was. <laughs> and you inherited that problem. Yeah, it's well, the original part of Perkins, and that's yeah. where. Our problems have been with sewer backups. Our friends have paid enormous amounts of money. Bill will advocate for those being done right. as soon as possible. It's, it's no secret what my passion is. Parks are right. All right. That's easy. Um, or the police department. That's another passion of mine. But the ride along with Bob was not only enlightening, it was like, I, I guess there was a city uh, who diverted their. I learned this at mayor school. There was a city that had all this excess money for sewer and disposal and all that. And, and they decided since they had all this excess money that they were gonna go ahead and put it into something else since they had all this excess money. And then come to find out their little sewer plant went and you're talking millions of dollars and they didn't have it. So that's one thing I've learned in the ride around and being here is the savings that these people have put for us uh, set aside and then we just okayed a couple months ago new valves and the maintenance that Bob has insured for our sewer facility and allowing people to dump and then putting uh, making restrictions on the dump and things like that and having more control over what's going on has saved our city a lot of money. A lot of money. And I am for one proud of them for that. So as 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 we start to look and start to try to prioritize what's the worst in the city and I no no offense. No sister. I, I... Our passions you set aside our passions and what's important to maybe us personally. I think we just look at Bob as our guide and our go-to as the person we hired to do the job and you tell us what's most important. So I will always, and I have told anyone who said this, I will always advocate for that library. But I have always said I am completely okay with being outvoted about that. Like. I will not not advocate for them. 
Like I, th right. I think it is a very crucial part of this community. But the priorities have to be the priorities. But I'm a firm believer in there's some wants and then there's needs. And I feel like there has to be balance of those two things. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to balance both of those things for your citizens. And that's, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in those things. But I also respect you guys. And if you guys don't feel like the library is the thing, then I am okay with saying, hey, I did what I could. Like, I spoke my piece. I tried to get that going. The priority was not that as the group. Like that see, but that doesn't I don't, mean it's not important. Because because I don't I don't not I mean I understand that everything that was listed is a priority. It's like when sewer is coming up through Commissioner Rebello's house, or there's well, roots, huh? Well, there's <laughs> I mean, your parks, your parks can be important, your libraries can be important, but when people have sewer coming up through their, into their homes, it's it, that's a pretty big deal. So. Well, and I live in the older part of Perkins, and my house, 1973, is when it was built, and it's. Yeah, when I, 12 days after I moved in, we had a sewage issue. I mean, I didn't call the city. I was blessed to be able to take care of it myself financially. Um, but when we start talking about what we want to do, I consider myself and I consider my neighbors and my older, you know, neighborhood. And I think that to look long term at long term planning, if we want to fix the roads and we want to do all these different infrastructure things you have to start under the ground otherwise you have to rip up those brand new roads and just lay them down and so we're kind of in a pivotal point where we can progress and we can do certain things but we also have to look at what is outdated and to me that is what's important so that progress shoots even further it's like an arrow it should, it'll shoot even further so you know i do rely on infrastructure improvements so that we can continue to move forward and, and create those projects so that it looks like we have a more lasting progress. You can't do economic development without infrastructure. No, and you, and if you, I'm learning, if you don't take care of the hard infrastructure, it's really hard later on to take care of the soft infrastructure, which is the people programs, which is park and rec, which is the library, which is senior citizens, but if you don't take care of the hard infrastructure, then you're still not taking care of the people, even though they may want all these other programs. Mm -hmm. You can't get to those other programs if the hard infrastructure in economic development, if all that is not taken care of first. I agree with what you're saying 100%, but I also think it's relevant to say, if you don't have citizens in your town, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what's under the ground, and if we don't have services for our citizens, they won't be here. But I, I so don't you I think that we're trying. I mean, no, I do, I do. I I'm mean, just saying, like, I think that's why I say there's a balance of what you want, right? I don't and what we need. And while we focus mainly on what we need, I think we also have to understand we have to provide our citizens with services too that will make this the community they want to be at. Because until we, until we started Park and Rex again, I felt like we were telling, hey, Perkins is great, but go to Stillwater because so, they've got all the things. And, and I agree with you as well. As It's a balancing act that you have to do in prioritizing the hard infrastructure. But even though we might not have a library that we want right now, we have a really good program here. My granddaughter comes up here and she's about got her necklace full of all her prizes that she's gotten a great job because she's come up here i mean and it's it's advertised well it's it's out there i got, I got some holy ghost bumps on that one because my granddaughter totally enjoys the library and the park and rec coming up and about and we've got new volunteers at the senior citizen center we got bob involved on that board as well so i i think that i just really feel like we're headed in the right direction all of the plates yeah, I'll put it down. If you could place. ask them to set a long range goal that they have not yet set, what would it be? What do you need them to set as a goal? We have a limited amount of money and a limited amount of borrowing capacity and grants as a 
hard to get. So, do we want to? What do we want to do? Yeah. We talked about the library. We talked about the parks. We talked about water and sewer and infrastructure. Tell me <laughs> what direction you want to go, and then I'll do my best to get it there. It all goes back to decisions. Yeah. So. And I assume you did a lot of that during the budget process already. You've set it for this next year. But really over the next 10 years, where do you want to be? And that's something each of you needs to put some thought into. I would encourage you to read the materials and make some notes and think about where you want it to go over time. And then how do you help get it there? I think the most important thing you can help get it there is to do your jobs well and manage well and create a good team so you can go have good healthy discussions about where do we need to go to set priorities because if you don't do that you won't get there and uh, having one, everyone on the same page and working as a team will will create an environment where you can do those things we went to a city that hadn't had a planning meeting in 30 years none and it showed they also hadn't seen their city attorney in five years. They'd been sending him a check every month, but they hadn't seen him in five years. Tammy. Rachel, that was so I just blacked out for a second. <laughs> okay? I'm kidding. I mean, at least Bob's here for Tammy to talk to, so she's not like, you know. I don't, I don't know if this is relevant or irrelevant to the current discussion, but, and it's no fault of anybody, but. The capital improvement plan was developed by Rachel and I. Yeah. And the mission statement and the core values, that was developed by me when I got here 10 years ago because there wasn't one. Yeah. And so, I don't know, you, sometimes you want more engagement and sometimes you wish you wouldn't ask for more engagement, I guess, but. Um, yeah. I don't know how And sometimes you feel the void that is left by others not doing what they're supposed to. Sure. And, and, and sometimes those others who don't do what they're supposed to get involved in things that really are none of their business. But the others, the positive side is we have all these problems, but they're all related to growth. Yeah. Right. They're growing things. And there's a lot of places that don't have these problems. Uh, absolutely. So, but I think I need to know, you know, do I need to be focusing on this 23,000 feet of sewer line and these 15,000 feet of water lines that keep breaking all the time um, and trying to do, you know, there's programs out there now uh, with uh, funding opportunities or do we want to try to go a different direction? I can do more than one thing, but I need to know, I think my bosses need to tell me, you know, I'm, where do you want me to take the ship? Well, and I, I think Bill was talking a little self-interested when he talked, and, and I'm with him because I'm the lawyer, but when he talked about the issues being infrastructure, policing, and personnel, because those are the things that OMAX is going to be paying out the most on, right. you know, and so um, I can, every penny that you, that you pay out for a cop who doesn't Mirandais or whatever, you know, um, is money that could have gone to the library. And so I think those, and that's just an example of the type of thing. Didn't um, some of our insurance go up because of a payout for some sewer issues? In the, it can. I don't, know that it, I don't know if it did, but I it think it can. did in and the past. Did go up. I don't know why. Yeah. So um, you. you you do end up in that cycle where you're, 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 you don't have the money for the extra growth issues because you're not taking care of your basics. And I would, um, I would say that it's always infrastructure is always going to be an issue. I think you've got an amazing police department. I like that. Personally, I like the uh, philosophy of the police department. Um, personnel. I, I don't need to comment on. You've done enough of that. Yeah, they, you know, that's in a, we're in a good spot, I think. I think I mean, I would add to that because this is my thing, you know, um, and I just got her thing. Um, but I think that long range, 
you really need to be look at looking at and understanding planning and zoning. And some things that you could do, because right now you may not be able to throw a whole lot of money at downtown, but you, you need to decide if, I mean, ultimately the decisions you make day to day will, will reflect a big decision that you make. In other words, I drove through Cushing. Um, I drive through Cushing every time I come here and when I go home. Bless your heart. And, yeah. <laughs> but one day I thought, oh, I got, this, I got this letter I meant to mail. I'm going to go find the post office. Oh, my and GPS says it's a, it's a mile down the road. So I went into town and it broke my heart what their downtown looks like. And and I think about Muskogee, where I grew up, and it's the same in every, lots and lots and lots of little towns have no downtown anymore, but they've got that strip along the highway where all of their strip malls are. And um, so I think that's one thing that, that, that you may want to consider is, what is your priority? Well, your priority may be, we really just have a couple of blocks of downtown, let's go develop the highway. That's a, that is a, legitimate response. That's a legitimate decision. Um, but that's a discussion I think that needs to be had because if you if you don't choose to develop downtown, you're choosing not to. Does that make sense? You are making a decision. We used to have way. a downtown committee. So. A development committee. Did it just fall apart? Yeah, it was a private deal not affiliated with the city yet. And there are some good downtown developments that have been done around the state. Some cities have been very successful at it. If that's your goal, find those. And uh, you can model it after what they've done. But you get to decide that. Back to why, why are you deciding about a pump station when you should be deciding the bigger picture? Your job's so much more important than uh, some of that minutia. You had, you had a comment. I, wanted to, well, I, wanted to, I wanted to participate in the whole what do you think we need to be looking at conversation, yeah. if I could. And I agree with everything we said, but I wanted to put my two cents worth in because I'm also the HR director, is that we continue to look at personnel. And thank you for giving us three new people this year. That's awesome. But we still don't have, you said one person for every hundred. So now we're at 25 or 26 at 3,100. So You're still way understaffed. 250. So should be one, person long per term. Term. one person for every 100 citizens. So we have, I think, when we are able to hire the new public works person, I think we will then be at 26. And what are we at now? Population. Oh, population, 3250. So. so just long range, I want us to keep thinking. And to do that, you know, retention is so important. So we have to pay a competitive wage because it costs you 35% of an annual salary to replace an employee in terms of lost wages and, I mean, lost time and... And everything you want to do causes someone to do some more work. <laughs> and so we're also talking economic development needs to be up there to help pay for all of that. Exactly. And, and the other thing that's wonderful about Perkins, which is why I, well, I moved here sight unseen, but I stick, stuck around. And I really Did you like seriously? It. Sight yeah. unseen? Sight unseen. Oh, sister. I pulled in. All right. I'm living here. Uh, is that the people that work in administration at the city love Perkins. That's why they do the job. And so that's something to retain, but continue in terms of culture and morale. And that's part the group you can help with. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. And in this. Why are you still teaching? You know, the mayor spoke on economic development. David, on Friday, will be uh, before the Norman City Council doing this training, third largest city in the state. He will tell them that Stillwater has north of 60 million more dollars annually than Norman does. Edmund. Edmund. Edmund, Edmund brother. Edmund. Edmund. 68 million dollars annually more than Norman does in sales tax. Now, why is the quality of life in Edmond the way it is versus other places? 60 million a year goes a long ways to pay for it. But Norman has a 
kind of helps being right next door. Like I said. <laughs> but Norman, Norman has OU and Edmund has UCO, and Edmund still has sixty-eight million dollars a year more than. They also have they have two colleges. Because Edmund's made a lot of decisions to look at the future. Exactly, infrastructure's in good shape. Their roads are. Their city government, the way their their city employees and the way that they hire and retain is. Yeah, kind of. they're the gold standard at Oklahoma. I, we think. Edmund. Edmund, Edmund has been for the oh, yeah. long period of time. Yeah, there's probably Edmund, and I don't know who'd be second. And, and, and they'll give world. you another comparison: sales tax revenue. Edmund compared to Broken Arrow, Edmund brings in 160 million a year. Broken Arrow brings in 60 million. 100 million a year difference. What's their what is their sales tax? Uh, rates are going to be similar. They may be a little bit different. What's the population of Edmund? Broken Arrow's bigger. 100 million a year. 100 million a year. A billion bucks over 10 years. You do a lot with a billion bucks. Over and, and our city has grown more than any other city around us in the last two years, and we still struggle with um, sales tax and economic development. Well, the way Go ahead. I know this isn't the topic of the evening, but I'm sure you told them this economic development moves at the speed agreed. If you guys aren't in the land business, if you don't have in economic incentives to and people are going to live here and they're going to shop in Stillwater. Land and money to put in infrastructure when they need it. <clears throat> Those bigger stores like Sam's, I was in Sam's in Edmond, and the lady, the cashier said, there's a lot of you guys up near Stillwater that come down here. I should get a bus, take orders, <laughs> and come to Stillwater. <laughs> and I was, oh, wow. I was in shock that she had made that comment and that's why they have a lot more sales tax revenue is we're all going, I mean, Stillwater, all these areas around here, going to Edmond to shop. How many people in this room go to Stillwater Walmart or to get stuff they could get in Perkins? It's cheaper. I do, but I'll tell you that Williams grocery store over there is in line, if not cheaper than Walmart. I, I go to Williams a lot. Because I well, hate shops. I didn't say that to be accusatory. No, no, I, I did. It's part of the chance. conversation. Well, yes. Where do you it's, buy your gas? Do you buy it when if you work in Stillwater? Do you buy it before you go to work or after you go to work in Stillwater, or do you go to the Yonkey with the drive-through ice coffee? I, I have to admit, since the election, I have purchased my gas in Perkins. <laughs> Even if I'm, I just top it off if I have to, and if it's a long trip, I'll have to gas up along the way, but. I'll pull in here over it on cue and I gas up. I will tell you right now, on my way to work, my gas light came on, but I would be fine. <laughs> and when I got back in my car to come here, I was like, well, I cannot be late and I'm not getting gas. I have like eight miles on my car. <laughs> 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 that also by an But there's a lot of other things. I mean, seriously, this it, my eyes have been opened a lot and anything I can do to help the sales tax in my little city, I'm going to do. Well, I've said so many times that one of the things that people learn from public service is that if it was easy, it would have already been done. You know, you, you, people think, well, the government should just fix that. And, and you're like, well, if that was easy, it would have been done. I say so that to my hitting and pitching clients all the time. You. If it was easy, there'd be yeah. four girls here at 6 o'clock in the evening on a hot night, not just you. <laughs> so we, right, we, we keep right. trudging forward on that. I'll say Bob and I have had this conversation and I know I've introduced the conversation to the chamber about having an advertisement run during the OSU football games and um, that says because we have a lot of traffic but they all turn to Amprey. Mm -hmm. They don't come the mile into town to go to our McDonald's, to go to our Sonic. I, I don't know how to make that idea move forward but some kind of advertisement as far as hey stop in perkins on the way home instead of with pistol you know Pete's I mean? house and perkins yeah mm -hmm. literally use that so i mean he's on so our water towers i i don't know how to take that idea and i don't know who to take that idea to bob and i have had this conversation as far as this is an idea but i don't know what to do with it 
but I do think because I know like the co-op does a does a commercial during the football games. I mean, because um, I'm always like, well, why don't we do one? So, but it, I, people don't know what they don't know. People don't turn this way to come down. We do have some traffic that goes through Main Street, but nothing like that turns at Main uh, at Amprite to go to go to Edmond. I have to tell you, there, I was at city attorney meeting for city attorneys in the in the Tulsa area that they've been he's been doing and for years years and years decades yeah and um decades. and one of the the uh sky took attorney second time he's told me if i brought up perkins he says they have the best beef jerky over there beef ralphs you know and um and what I, what I was thinking from what you were saying was that people aren't going to drive into Perkins for McDonald's or Sonic. I hate to say that. No, you're right. But we need something different and unusual, or, you know, what, and whether it's beef jerky. I mean, why would the Sky City turn so, to the Perkins I, for, for I have asked some people in the community. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is important. It I is important it. because you can put it in your motorcycle jacket and <laughs> chew on it while you're going down the highway. Um, speaking of motorcycles, I, I, I have asked a group, a community group, to have a bike night. Um, a lot of us bikers, not bicycles, motorcycle hunter. <laughs> I get it right now. I just got it. We go places to eat. We will ride to eat. And we highlight, yeah, I got you. <laughs> highlight the restaurants that we do have. We've got some good restaurants to go eat at, and I, I've asked for maybe a couple bike nights in the fall and in the spring, and highlight the territorial plaza. I don't know, bring in food trucks, and we're getting all of that revenue because I'm serious. Bikers will ride some place to eat. Look, we all ride to Aishans to eat, and honestly, it's just a bar. Our okay. restaurants, our restaurants, are it is just not just better. a bar. It has the most amazing fried chicken. I'm sorry, right. I'm just gonna say it. You guys ever? That's it. it. <laughs> just a bar. I didn't say anything. You guys ever Actually, been to uh, South Dakota? Yes, sir. Sure. On a motorcycle. Have you ever seen billboards in South Dakota? All drug. Mm -hmm. Walls oh, drug. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be a ton of money. What if there was a billboards coming into Perkins that said gas is much cheaper here or Ralph's beef jerky is the best because Bucky's can't even sell it or you know, something. Yeah. How many billboards could you put up for a TV ad at OU game? So would a billboard be? All I'm saying is, if you find a little nichey hooky thing, like if you're going to Texas, Bucky's in 37 miles, Bucky's in 20 miles. You go there, and it's the world's most expensive gas, because once you get in there and buy your $40 a pound big elk jerky, <laughs> and your big bag of $12 almond nuts, then your gas is now twice what it would have been. Well, and there, if you do something like that, it needs to be before Western if you're coming. Before Western, because a lot of them cut off and it take Western into Stillwater instead of coming even in to. Um, you need all the way over to Cool Road. Yep. And I, I, I agree. You, 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 your Chamber of Commerce people won't like this, and I'm not advocating for it, but the reality is the reality. And Manford moved the grocery store, the bank, and the McDonald's onto the highway because that's where the traffic is and that's where they want to capture those dollars. That's why there's two dollar generals on the highway. That's why the Sonic's on the highway. They didn't leave Phelps Grocery uh, a block and a half, three blocks off of the highway. And that's why sales tax is double what it was 15 years ago. It's doubled. Doubled in 15 years. So, sales tax is doubled. What about retail sales, David? Yeah, same thing more than doubled. We want a happy merchant class. The, yeah. the, the gross retail sales has more than doubled. Yeah, we what, what is Manford's population? There are 3,3500. So it's a 4A school? 3A, 4A? Yeah.
Same. Okay. I just think we're missing. We, I, I think, and maybe I'm wrong. I, I know a lot of Perkins sales tax in the water based off the of thing, but I do think there is a lot of shopping that takes place in Perkins. But I think I feel like we're not taking advantage of the people that are coming through our town or are bypassing our town. So, like he said, find a niche, find advertisement, find something, and. OSU football and OSU basketball games bring a lot of out-of-town money in our town, but I don't know how we get their money, but we need, in my opinion, we need something that says make that turn instead of going 12 miles to Guthrie and you take, stopping at that gas station. Well, it might take someone more creative than me, Sarah. Um. <laughs> Not. She, she's really hip though. Let's Justin, we're picking up Bob's. We have the home. Of, we Pistol have Pistol Pete. Pete's home. Yes. You're talking OSU. You're talking billboards. Find a way to combine all that. I mean, I got up, so I think it's we'll Process for planning, though. Wouldn't it be great if you knew in the next year you're going to have four meetings at lunch or whatever's convenient, and at each of those you're going to talk about some long range planning project, whether it's economic development, public image. Or whatever it is, and you get to focus on just that, and, that was and come out of it with ideas head. of what you could do, because that's what staff needs. They shouldn't be writing the mission statement and outlining the goals of council. They need you to help do that. And if you don't take the time to do that, that is dedicated to that, guess what? It never happens. You talk about talk pump about, stations. Talk about ideas. Well, you're just talking about ideas. You're not yeah, making right. a plan. Formal not action. making decisions. You're not, not making, making the plan. The You're having an agenda discussion. So you can talk about economic development and nothing else. And focus on it. And everyone bring their best ideas. And then hopefully at the end of it, you can capture it in some sort of resolution that says, these are the priorities that we came up with. And here's how we're going to do it. And, and this is tonight is what I have my, my vocabulary calls a work session. When there's no action on your right. agenda, it's a work it's a work session. And um, I think we could have, Bob and I talked about this, having a, a work session quarterly. And have it in a different building. And the public has to be able to come. You know, all the rules still apply. So why can't we meet in the training room at the fire department? Take two work. Meet at the sewer plant. If there's a table free, all the to sit around, you know, figure out what your infrastructure is, figure out what your, your issues might be, have a, meet, have a quarterly meeting. And I think the people location. would enjoy seeing us do that. As long as we post it and they have... They right. Identify what and, you're going to talk about. And, and, yeah. So, Bob, how do you, how do you see uh, PIDA being a part of our economic development and changing that, that group? Well, you need to find money put into PIDA, but it could be used as economic development. And then what you need to do, or to, I've been sitting here thinking since Bill talked, how does, a, how does, a, how do you creatively finance the purchase of land? Well, what Manford did, the unsold, unsold part of that is, that's the result of years of saving up money. And then what they did is they bought how many acres? 100 acres. 100 acres. Well, say subdiv failed subdivision, uh, 100 lots in a failed subdivision. And what did everybody in town say? Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> rocks and trees. Why would you ever do that? That's all it'll ever be. And then when they sold it, did they get their money back? Uh, they've sold 25 of the 100 acres, paid close to a million to buy it. They've captured right at a million in what they've sold and still own 75 acres. So when they were trying to get the grocery store out of that rat nasty little strip mall thing from the 60s, they couldn't quite get to the price that the grocery store wanted. So the mayor took an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that said City of Manford at the top and said, Dear Phelps, thank you for your generous contribution of $83,000 to the City of Manford. Wrote his name at the bottom of it. They now have a tax deduction and they got the deal done. And it cost one eight and a half by a sheet of paper. 
So they bought the old grocery store, that's where the new city hall is going. And where the current city hall is will be declared surplus and they'll turn it, it's on the highway, it'll turn into an economic development project. Nice. So, so it takes being creative, it's difficult, it uh, takes long range planning, it takes getting everybody on board, setting some goals. But if you, one way to look at it, and, and economic development's different. Cities didn't used to be an economic development business. 20 years ago, it's, and, and we have some cities who still don't think they should be in the economic development business, and that's their choice. And we have, we, we have a person in town that oftentimes gets villainized but we have one of the most active developers in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, I argue with him all the time, you know, on plan reviews or codes or whatever, but he, you want to talk about somebody that should be in on an economic development discussion? That man's got a lot of want to. He's got land and all he cares about is turning that land into money. Is that, is that okay with you if we had? A meeting with him on yeah. the discussion part. I talk to him about ideas. It all the time. Well, he, want, he wants Perkins to thrive. Yeah. Yes, he does. That doesn't bother me. Key to success is having good partners sometimes. So. I mean, his his logo is a small city on the grow. And I, I agree. Well, we can't be on Facebook, and I'm not saying anybody here was, mm -hmm. but when he's developing a piece of property, well, I can't believe he's taking the trees out. This is going to kill Perkins. <laughs> Well, you know, look, it's America. You can buy it and grow oak trees. I mean. My question would be, so again, I think we've seen a lot of especially smaller towns and cities go, it's not a Walmart. That's a bad, bad example. Tesla, we'll throw that, we'll say it's not Tesla, but, you know, something, I kind of consider Tesla like this. We're going to throw a ton of money to get this business here, and we don't even know what we really want our city to look like. We don't know if we want to develop our downtown or our highway. We don't know, okay, where do you want to go? And we'll throw money at you, where do you want to go? And I think that's a bad idea because then you, you end up with a lot of unintended consequences. If you have your bigger plan, then you can say, where can we throw money to get people to come there. and where do we want them in this big picture? And you're not the only one talking about these issues. Uh, no. We were in Broken Bow. Well, the city manager in Broken Boat decided they needed to buy downtown that was dilapidated. The city's been buying up buildings. They've been buying them, tearing them down, or set, rehabbing them and selling them. City doing it. They bought a mobile home park that was a, a mobile home meth lab park. And they pulled out all the mobile homes and now they have land next to a restaurant that's on access to the highway that, that can be developed. They have pretty much a whole city block that was dilapidated buildings, they bought it, they tore the buildings down, now they're redeveloping it. But the key was, their city manager would say, they bought into a 10-year plan or a 15-year plan that we know this is going to take a lot of time, it's going to take patience, it cannot be, boy, why isn't this done already? Yeah, finance it to get the return, yeah. knowing it's not going to come tomorrow. But there are lots of models of what cities have done around the state. Collinsville's done a great job with downtown. There are others. That, that if you ever go to Bass Pro Shop in Broken Arrow, the city of Broken Arrow owns that building. Get out of town. They own the land. Yeah. Place the building. That's brilliant. So when you talk about um, having a lunch meeting and focusing on one thing like mission statement or economic development. Um, and goal setting. The goal setting. I think, I can't speak for the rest of the commissioners, but for me, having a lunch meeting during my regular you can have it in the summertime anytime you want. I'll be there. It doesn't have to be lunch. Okay. It doesn't have to be lunch. No. Any dinner. It can be a dinner meeting. It can be something a little more casual. Okay. That's a work session. Can it be food? Can it be food? Yeah. Can have food. Should, Should have food. 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 Thank you. Yes. You know, I was going to bring something tonight, but I didn't have time. So, okay. So we could do it on a Saturday. I like that idea, too. I do. Get over emphasize. Hi. Bye, Bob. Love you, Bob. We have COVID. Oh, Racial. Oh, Bob. Emphasize this is a you got, process. She, she can be there. <laughs> Just enjoy yourself. We can do dinner. We like dinner. <laughs> but if we're going to feed you, you might as well come. Monday through Friday might be a little easier. <laughs> we understand the work life balance can be very important in terms of personnel. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a personnel director. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I did a feed city council people came uh, to David and I from the city manager of Jinks, who was city manager there for 33 years. By the way, that's 10 times longer than the average tenure of city managers. And one of the things he did that made him long and successful is he fed his city council. Now Mike Nunley fed his city council. And so Jinx, because they had stability over three decades, of course it doesn't hurt you're scooched up next to Tulsa. It doesn't hurt. Sometimes it hurts. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> but a town that size really shouldn't have an aquarium. But they do. Um, and they own it. And they own they it. Do. They built it. Just no donuts. Well, they maintain that and everything. Yes. We're not advocating for an aquarium. I don't want to. I love well, I just, I'm, He's talking about you bringing food, but no donuts. I'll bring food. But it's, it's figuring out what you want to have. And, you know, it's just an interesting discussion. Did all of that happen? Jinx 30 years ago was 5,000 population. Uh, we could pull their state audit, but I would bet you it's going to show they have approximately 40 million in surplus funds. There are close to 30,000 population 30 years later. Did all of that happen by accident? No. Somebody sat around and said, what do we want Jinx to be in 30 years? It's land. And they stuck with it. And moves at the and speed. And they had a very stable council over a long period of time who did their jobs well, and they let staff do their job well, and they set goals and worked toward those. Not a hard concept, is it? Uh, we've seen other cities who are the opposite of Jinx. We know cities that are broke. Uh, that's not an accident either. Mm -hmm. So, I think we should, correct me if I'm wrong or maybe I'm off, but planning and goal setting is something that we would need to talk about first. Uh, potentially another one of these meetings like this, like a work session meeting like wow. this. And I think what, what David said a while ago is about all of us commissioners, we need to go home. And we need to come up with ideas of maybe where we personally yes. would like to set goals or where we'd like to be in 10 years and then come and have a work session. Prioritize it. Talk about it, discuss it. Um, like my dad used to say, cuss and discuss it. And then um, then set another meeting for that, that priority, the one that we found at the top, and have a, a, a session for that so that it's not like... Uh, super long amount of time at each little session like david said prioritize and we just take and be real one, and be realistic one agenda item is what you said and talk about it one topic one topic and i, I but I, I think like commissioner rabello said i i think maybe our first one needs to be goals discussion of goals mission statement in goals at the top. There are 10 questions on the stability test. They all relate to each other. You've got to be financially stable to be able to do economic development. You've got to, the governing body's got to do their job well to be able to do any of them. You've got to have good meetings because if your employees who show up for your meetings hate the process of coming to your meetings, they're not going to say, why would they? You've got to find a way to make that an enjoyable process. The group of you need to work well together so you'll enjoy it enough to stay and stick with it over time. Because the worst thing we hear as staff members is the good council member who says, I just don't enjoy it and I'm not gonna do this anymore. I heard that from a, a city attorney just this last week who said their very good mayor has told him, she's a retired school administrator. This mayor has told him, you know what, I, this is a lot more trouble and a lot more work than I thought it was gonna be. I don't think I can continue doing this. I don't think I'll run next time. What chaos that's gonna cause in that town very good mayor, absolutely dedicated to it, worked very hard, but it's no longer enjoyable. And that's a sign of failure by the group of you if you don't want <coughs> it enjoyable for each other because we don't need you to quit and the two of you to quit and have to start over because it's an educational process to start over. Mm -hmm. But money is a part of it. Sand Springs, we had a work session entirely about the finances of the city. Council had to understand it. Here's what's available in bond capacity. Here's existing debt. Here's how we compare to every city around us. Complete understanding. Here's where we are financially. 
And that led to them saying, we've got about 15 million in geo bond capacity. Let's make a list of what we want. And let's go see if the voters will approve 15 million in projects. And they did a month ago in June, June election. But it's because all of those pieces fit together that a long history of council working well together, a high level of trust between administration and council leads to a lot of public image that improves public confidence, more money to do more work. Well, I like Commissioner Rabello's idea of starting with goals. And so maybe, maybe ending here is for staff to come up with some proposed meeting dates for planning topics and then I'll give Bob some time to see what is the bonding capacity? Is that even doable? You don't want to have a failed election. You want to wait until the timing is right that uh, all of you feel like things are going well and you have a lot of momentum. Maybe that's a year away. Sand Springs, when they decided to have a GO election, was about a year ago. So it, it was a year process to get to the point of, of doing it. And then they had to convince the public these are the great projects. So all of that is doable. It all starts with a group of you. It really does. And so this is the last type of a meeting you would ever expect for an insurance company to sponsor and support and encourage. Why do we do it? Doesn't seem insurancy at all, does it? <laughs> kind of does. Kind of does. <laughs> the best run cities and towns have fewer claims and the claims they have cost less money to resolve. Best run cities and towns have fewer claims. The claims they have cost less money to resolve. So it all works together to lower your uncertainty, to lower your risk, and to make our pool stable over time, which it is. So we appreciate y'all letting us come out tonight and appreciate your service to your community very much. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, so, before we talk about adjourning, do, would we like to set a goal meeting here tonight? I think we'll dates. get together on some dates and send them out, or possibly have an agenda item oh, talk about in August or something. Maybe we'll just schedule some meetings. Actually, yes, that's only. Maybe come up with a proposed meeting schedule that can go on the next to yeah. the end of the review. Okay. Yeah, okay. something like so, that. So, um, so. Um, you want us to send you suggested dates, or you want us to throw dates at you, or what would you like from us? Nothing. Nothing. I'll throw stuff at you. Oh, catch. Okay. Ooh, nice. <laughs> 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 dodge. <laughs> dodge. Don't play dodgeball in my PE classes, folks. That's aggressive. I know, it's super safe. Okay, so um, commissioners, anybody have anything else to say? Justin, Sarah, Autumn? I'm good. Well, let me ask Tammy one last hard question. Why do you vote to adjourn? Why do we vote to adjourn? Yeah. Because not? somebody might have something left to say. And the mayor asks, does anybody have anything left to say? And when they say no, can the mayor say, we're adjourned? Okay, we don't need to vote. I, Staff. I'm just asking. It seems risky not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why we do it. What do you as ask? An, as an insurance company, do you want to the risk? I, I want to make your clerk job easier to not have to write down uh, who made a motion and who seconded it. Okay, when they recess, do you, do you typically require a vote at, at quorum? Uh, they come back together? Quorum, I take quorum to find by whether we have it or we don't. And if we have it, we have it. Well, and I, I've thought about that. It's not like we're not on video. You're going to do the four If four of you are sitting here, you have a quorum. What if you vote no, you don't have one? You lose, right? <laughs> so, before we so anyway, schools no. always do that. I don't know why school Oklahoma schools school boards always make a declaration that they have a quorum. It seems oh. to me it's legally defined. You either do or you, you don't. Do you don't. I know. I've thought about that. You uh, do or you don't. But so anyway, I, 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 it's when not I, the wrong school board. <laughs> None of my cities vote well, to it. Yeah, yeah I, so I told you I was going to ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it's necessary to vote tonight and then we make the decision yeah. not to. I think you like <laughs> halfway through in the middle of the I know. Stop. <laughs> so, since the commissioners don't have anything else to say, does any staff have anything else to say? 
that's important. <laughs> now you guys. I make a, I make a motion that we adjourn the special meeting. I second. Amen. <laughs> Mayor. Yes, Sarah. Yes. Yes. You added three two votes on whether to adjourn. So, <laughs> so don't even <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's, it's not bad.